Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new review for The Real Housewives of Potomac Season 7, Episode 13. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with a friend. Tell somebody about it. Hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it, honey, because the helpers was showing out. Okay, everybody fighting, and I don't know what's going on. When the episode first opens up, Karen is at home packing for Ashley's birthday trip to Mexico. Ray and his slacks, they come in to see about her. <laughs> As my grandma would say, they come in to see about her. And she was like, I just hope this trip goes well, because the whole group is basically falling the hell apart. None of the helpers are getting along. None of y'all have any real beefs besides you and Shasha. Y'all just making up stuff at this point. Child, we just watching y'all make up stuff. So let's just get into it. So she tells him that her and Ashley are going to go early. They're taking Wendy because Wendy has more problems with people than not. So they show a flashback of only last season. Okay. Not this season. So nobody should have any problems with Wendy. And she tried to get past it. So I just really don't understand what's going on. I'm not sure why they just want to stay mad. Ashley has done some things before too and everybody made up with her but anyway if I was Wendy I would let them have it honey stay mad but at least they flying with her early to avoid any confusion because Mia is a loose cannon she's ridiculous and she might get to acting up she can't be trusted she's talking to Ray about that and saying that she hopes everything goes well and when she was talking I was thinking didn't Wendy and Robin make up you know, Robin probably hasn't revealed that to Gizzard because she don't want her being like, oh, y'all friends again? Because, you know, she has to ask permission. I ain't gonna never forget at that reunion when she looked at Giselle and said, are we mad at Ashley? She said, no, we're good with Ashley. Oh, okay. Charles a whole fool. Moving forward. In the next scene, we see Giselle in her Range Rover. Okay, okay, Giselle. I see you, Gizzard, from the Gucci Fiat to the Range Rover. <laughs> baby the checks are clearing honey get into it so anywho Giselle is in her Range Rover honey she riding around and she getting it and she gets a phone call from Robin or she calls Robin it's one or the other so Robin is asking her about her biopsy and she was like girl that stuff hurt it hurt I was scared and I have to say I can imagine what she's going through because at this point I've had about four biopsies and they are never fun like they just relax just relax no relaxing is not going to help and nobody is relaxing while you have this thing inserted and cutting off a piece of my whatnot absolutely not so robin tells her that she knew it was gonna hurt because she had a biopsy because she also had an abnormal pap smear so giselle was like telling us in the confessional because her fibroids are so big they can't remove them so she's gonna have to have her hysterectomy and she's terrified of the outcome let me just say this to y'all fibroids ain't no joke and black women are more susceptible to having them I almost died when I was pregnant because of fibroids and people are always like uh, because of fibroids people have pregnancies with fibroids every day everyone's body is different when I tell y'all my body was rejecting my baby because the fibroids thought that they were my baby and they were growing at the same time like it was something that I had never, ever even heard of medically. Child, it was a whole fool. We can get into that another time. Anywho, that's just a side note. I feel like there are natural ways though to shrink them because since having my son, I have been able to shrink them down because they were huge, huge, like I just, like huge. Anywho, I was able to shrink them down. So I think maybe Giselle needs to look into some natural ways to shrink them. Maybe she won't have to have the hysterectomy, but it's probably already done now. And I'm sure she was afraid because you're removing your entire uterus. Like that's a huge deal. But thankfully she's been blessed with three beautiful girls already. So she'll be fine. But she was just telling Robin that she's not sure how sex is going to be and how she's going to be able to walk around after that. I heard having a hysterectomy is like 40 times worse than having a recovery from a C-section. Now, I don't know because I've personally never had one, but I thought that it was good that Giselle was actually sharing something about her. We know absolutely nothing about Giselle, except she lives in the Etch-a-Sketch house. She was married to the cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater, Pastor Jamal H. Bryant, and she has three beautiful girls. That's all we know. We don't know not nothing, okay? Not nothing. So I was happy that she did share that. 
So she was like, yeah, but I mean, it ain't gonna stop me from traveling. I'm taking the girls to Martha's Vineyard. And then they switch gears. Honey, let's get into the mess. Giselle, I wish you the best and a speedy recovery if you've already had it or not. So then they switch over to, to talking about Karen's live show. That show was a fool. <laughs> that show was a fool. Now, listen, I like Karen, but I didn't like the live show. It's almost like when you hear a song on the radio and you really love it and it's giving all the zhuzh and you just love it. You sing it all the time and have it on repeat. And then you hear the artist performing it live. Sometimes it don't hit the same. So that's what Karen was giving me. It's like she's good on Potomac with an ensemble cast. But this show? No, absolutely not. So Giselle is like, yeah, I mean, she invited everybody in their mama but Sharice. Listen, Gizzard, Sharice is not getting a permanent spot on this show. So you can hang it up. Let it go. Like they let her go after season three. Please let it go, child. So Robin was like, yeah, and then she pretended that she didn't know Sharice wasn't on the text thread. So then Giselle gonna say, I mean, to exclude her on purpose, to be mean, I mean, why? Why don't you ask your sidekick why people exclude others to be mean? So it's okay for Robin to not invite Wendy to be mean, but not Karen. I guess because you like Sharice. Everybody not coming to everything, and y'all know that. Y'all all do that. You didn't invite Candace. Candace didn't invite you or Mia. Mia, child, she a whole other story. Rob didn't invite Wendy. And Karen didn't invite your little backwards wig wearing friend Sharice. Get over it. It's going to be okay. She's like, yeah, I mean, Sharice dropping that video was hilarious. And Karen was trying to act like she wasn't mad. It really wasn't hilarious. It gave Sharice. Okay, that's what it gave. And I don't ever want to see Tiff or Fee ever again. So Giselle's like, yeah, you know, Karen was mad about that. I just really want them to mend fences because me and Karen and Sharice, we used to be friends and I'm nosy. That's not why you want them to mend fences. You want them to be friends because it's going to shift the dynamics of this group and push Wendy out. Y'all ain't fooling me, honey. Girl gone. So she was like, yeah, I'm going to demand her to tell me what her issue is with Sharice and Karen going to eat you up. Go ahead and try it. She gonna eat you straight up alive. <laughs> Gone, you bad. Ooh, child. Moving forward. In the next scene, Rob and Juan playing in our faces. Hey, y'all. So they sit the boys down. And Robin tells them, you know, me and your dad have been engaged for two and a half years. And, you know, we think it's time to start planning our wedding. So somebody's gonna come over and take your measurements for a nice, handsome suit. Here go Carter. This is her younger son. Oh, for real? I thought y'all weren't going to get married. I thought it wasn't going to be no wedding. Oh, it ain't, but we need to see. <laughs> it ain't going to be no wedding, child. Not him spilling their tea by accident. He know what's being said in that house. The kids say the darndest things. Y'all should have prepped Carter before you shot this scene. Listen, son, we're going to be saying some stuff that we know ain't true. Just go along and get along and we'll get you a new game for that PS5. Got it? Because, honey, he sure was telling all the tea. So she's like, well, in the confessional, now that the prenup stuff is out, she feels like a weight has been lifted off her shoulder and now she can plan the wedding. So she tells them that it's going to be just the four of them. So Carter, again, he's like, well, what about Gigi and Pop Pop? She said, well, they are our number one supporters, but we want something small and intimate. Girl, two more people is not going to make it not small and intimate. You just don't want them there because they will be able to tell that the person marrying y'all is a paid actor and you ain't fooling me. Try y'all gonna be getting married by Reverend Leon Lonnie Lust. Y'all remember him from Mark? <laughs> oh, y'all. I swear I do not know where this stuff be coming from. Oh, my goodness, honey. But when I watch these heifers just lie, mm mm mm. Y'all be getting married by Reverend Leon Lonnie Lust. Ooh, child. Y'all ain't gonna be able to fool them parents. Them kids don't know no better. So when they see that paid actor, they're gonna be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I seen him on a show. What is it? Wait a minute. It's gonna come to me. Robin, you and Juan are not getting married. And furthermore, I don't wanna hear about it no more. Just like I don't wanna hear about Ashley's divorce. We don't give a damn. Moving forward. So production asks Robin, how do you think your parents are going to feel? She said her dad's going to be okay. Her mama, not so much. So then she asked the boys, so where y'all think we should get married? They said Jamaica. So then she going to say, how about the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland? No, ma'am. How about Montego Bay, Jamaica? They don't want to get married in no Maryland, girl. I hate when people ask for suggestions and don't plan on taking it. Y'all really can move the table out the way in the living room and get married right here. Okay, just do it. 
like Nike says. And one, I'm sure you're familiar with Nike. So let's just go and get it done, honey. We can actually do it right here, right now. But y'all ain't serious because y'all ain't getting married. And if y'all are getting married, y'all probably already were married when this was filmed. And y'all probably are married right now. But I don't know. So then the tailor shows up. Y'all. <laughs> Listen, I know it might not have been funny to nobody else, but them wasting this man's time had me hollering. When I tell y'all I was in here cracking up because they were so serious about it. Robin's like, yeah, well, you know, I don't picture myself in a white dress. I mean, I could be, I might not be. And so the tailor was like, well, that makes all the difference. So I can know exactly, you know, what we getting into. So he asked, what's their timeline? And she was like, yeah, you know, before the season picks up and Juan gets busy. Well, child, he might have a lot more free time on his hands, according to that lawsuit, allegedly. I'm just saying, honey. So she did say July. So he starts fitting them for the suits. And Robin is like, I mean, we have a month. This is her in the confessional. I mean, I need to figure out where it's going to be, who's going to be there. I need to figure out what I'm going to wear. And child, you can wear what you got on. Just go and get it done. And I was just sitting here thinking when she was talking, so if this was filmed a while ago and they were supposed to get married in July, we are now in 2023. Are they currently married? I'm going to find out and I'm going to bring it to y'all. Moving forward. In the next scene, Mia's in the office pretending to be a boss, honey, shopping on Shein. <laughs> I was looking at that computer. I said, Mia ain't a bit more doing work than the man in the moon, honey. Writing on these sticky notes. Probably writing out her grocery list. Y'all ain't got time to be playing with Mia. She don't do nothing but lie. So G comes in and she asks him about the new shops that they're opening and when they're opening and whatnot. She says she's excited about the trip because she always puts herself last and she needs some me time. So then she tells G that Jacqueline is upset with her because she won't help her with the kids. So this is how it's going down. Jacqueline's sister is her nanny. So if she needs somebody last minute, Mia is always telling her, just drop the kids off at my house. They can come wherever my kids are. And she feels like it's okay every now and then, but all the time isn't fair. See, that's why I don't like people doing nothing for me because of people like Mia. First is her sister. Okay, let's just get that out the way. It's her sister. So I'm sure it's okay. Second, her mom took you in when you needed it. So I just feel like, why are you always treating this girl this way? Not saying that she's indebted to her forever, but Mia thinks that she runs everything and everybody. How are her kids being there affecting you? Like neither of y'all gonna be watching them. So how is it affecting you? It's probably not fair to the sister to have four kids all at once, but it's nothing to do with you, Mia. You always got a problem, girl. I just couldn't be friends with a person like Mia. I just could not. In the next scene, the ladies are on their way to Ashley's birthday trip. Well, at least Karen, Ashley, and Wendy. We see them getting ready to take off. So the rest of the ladies are at the airport waiting to leave. Candace is backing at Bob. Candace, you are so pretty, but I hate those bobs. I do not like bobs on Candace. I don't know if it's the wrong kind of bob. I don't know what it is, but I do not like that bob. It's giving Nutty Professor. It's giving that wig that Jada had on. I don't like it. It's a, except it's not bumped. You remember it was bumped at the reunion. Oh, child, I just hate them wigs. I, mean, ooh, I just hate them. Wendy and Ashley and Karen, they arrive in Mexico. And they got Ashley's Corona in the Sprinter. At this point, Ashley needs to be sponsored by Corona. Because she going to make sure that she keep a beer in one of them hands at all times on every single episode of every single season. Corona, shout out to your girl, Ashley. So Wendy is talking about, yeah, the doctor told me that I can drink. I just need to drink lots and lots of water, but we'll see if that happens. It better happen. Wendy, listen to me. I'm speaking directly to you, honey. Ashley's birthday isn't worth your health. Okay, don't get crazy. Meanwhile, the other heifers are in the airport and we find out from Gizzard that Mia and her representative were arguing on the plane in first class. Yeah, y'all should have had Mia and Jacqueline on soul plane. Not in first class, honey, because they don't know how to act. Mia is giving her version of events, which is probably a lie, okay? And Jacqueline said, basically, Mia was trying to tell her how to be a parent and how to parent her kids. And Mia said, Jacqueline told her that it takes a village, but she wouldn't know anything about that. And Mia felt like that was a really low blow. Now, me personally, I can't feel an ounce of sympathy for either one, especially Mia. After how you treated Wendy, y'all just need to hash it out, honey, because I'm still mad. <laughs> 
one thing about me, I'm going to hold a grudge. I'm still mad at how you treated Wendy, and I have yet to see you apologize. So therefore, in thus and such, I don't care what you and your representative are experiencing. I really don't. Mia, you're an awful friend. I saw how you did her with that deodorant in Miami. So I am sure that it is much more to the story than you are letting on. So like I said, girl, anywho, back at the hotel, Ashley is pulling out all these vibrators to give to the ladies. Is this a bachelorette party or a birthday trip? I don't know. It was confusing me. So Karen comes to Ashley's room and she's like, you know, Giselle wanted to know how she could get a Porsche. So she pulls out this flashlight. I guess she's going to let Mia examine her and whatnot. Back on the Sprinter, for some reason, Candace is talking about her vagine sweating and whether or not they look at it and if they look at their own. And she's like, y'all need to check it out. Y'all need to look at it. So Robin in the confessional, she was like, Candace is giving Mia vibes with the vagine talk and whatnot. Like it's really giving Mia. Maybe her, Mia and Jacqueline need to get into a room together and, you know, examine each other. I thought that was so funny. I was like, Rob, that was a good one. Okay, Rob. So while they all talking about that and their virgins and whatnot, Mia is like, yeah, I mean, maybe we should all get drunk and we should all examine and compare ours. Oh, child, on to the next scene. Back in the room with Ashley and Karen, they're trying to find unique gifts for the ladies. So Ashley was like, but wait, I don't have anything unique for Cherise. Karen gonna say, oh, okay, God is good. <laughs> Girl, that God is good, honey. But then she did suggest that maybe they get a mini champagne bottle. I was like, okay, 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 that's cool. Back over on the Sprinter, they're talking about why Karen don't like Sharice. So Sharice was like, yeah, Karen said to Mia that I brought a dark cloud over the group. Here go Mia with her pick me vibes. Yeah, and I felt like Sharice is freaking fun. And again, the lies continue. Mia, you are a habitual liar at this point, honey. You've graduated from the little line problem to a habitual liar. Because ain't nothing fun about Shasha. Not nothing. In the next scene, Wendy, Karen, and Ashley, they go down to the lobby because they're there to greet them when they get off the sprinter. And y'all know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of when Kenya planned that trip to Mexico because she was trying to make up for that whole event that happened and the things that went down with Nene. She planned that trip to Mexico and her and, her and Miss Lawrence were down in the lobby with the mariachi band waiting on them to get off the bus. That's what that part reminded me of. This just showed me that Wendy is a very great sport because I wouldn't be greeting nothing. Do you hear me? Not nothing. This is when I would seriously have a stomach ache and I would be in the room and I meet y'all when I meet y'all. Honey, I'm not greeting nothing. But that's why I couldn't be a housewife. So they go straight to the Amber Room to have a little birthday celebration for Ashley. This is already a much better trip than Miami. And we're only five seconds in. So they're all getting cake and getting their drinks. And Jacqueline was like, I don't want to break bread just yet with Satan, a.k.a. Mia. And Giselle was like, who does she sell us all to? Now, listen, I would go into detail, but I'd be here all night. But I, I have a few suggestions. So Jacqueline said she felt like she was being the devil earlier. So Mia was like, I mean, we fight all the time. We fight like sisters. So Jacqueline was like, no, this is the worst fight that we've ever had. Mia said, no, it wasn't. Because in 11th grade, you threw a brick at my head. I was like, what? Jacqueline was like, that's 20 years ago. We're in a different place now. Mia is very controlling and she turns on you when she doesn't get her way. And I believe that. So Mia was like, no, I don't turn on you. I keep it 100. Okay, girl. So Jacqueline said Mia needs some D to relieve the tension. Not Jacqueline telling us Gordon ain't putting it down in that bedroom. Now she needs some D with a whole husband and a living man. Okay. So Candace said, wait, wait, who has D? <laughs> Candace, keep up, child. Oh, honey. So I guess she struck a nerve because Mia goes, well, you would know. You want to go there? Jacqueline said, go where? Mia said, uh, you feeling yourself. Don't try me. You better back down. Who does Mia think that she is? She loved to show out in front of these people that will probably never speak to her again if she gets let go from this show. Girl, this is your longtime childhood friend. Control yourself. So Jacqueline said, no, you back down. Mia said, okay, close your legs to marry me. Uh, Mia, leave Nene's one-liners alone, okay? We don't need them coming out of your mouth, child. Please leave them alone. So Sharice goes, married? What you mean, Mary? Mia said, mm-hmm, it's what she does. Yeah, it's what she does. 
So then Jacqueline jumps up and she's crying. She's like, I'm done with you. I have fought for you my entire life. That's effed up. I would never sleep with your husband. Skrr. Now, when did she say anything about you sleeping with her husband? That confused me. Because when did she say it was her husband? Child, what y'all got going on? I'm just so confused, child. So Candace is telling Mia, go talk to your friend outside. Go talk to her. Take her outside. Go talk to her. Mia's like, no, I'm not talking to her. She crying. She gonna stay crying. She upset. She gonna stay upset. So Wendy is over there with Jacqueline and she's like, it's okay. It's okay. So she's consoling Jacqueline. Both of y'all sit down and let them hash it out. Because they weren't worried about consoling y'all when things were going down. So let them do what they gonna do. I don't feel... 100% so sorry for Jacqueline because that's your friend and you know how your friend is and I sure don't feel sorry for Mia so Jacqueline is crying and Mia's like I don't care she said I don't do anything for her kids but they're at my house eating up all my damn food that alone that sentence by itself I will be done with Mia forever like you couldn't wait till mad day you couldn't wait to throw something in my face you're doing things for me only to throw them back in my face so Jacqueline was like, this is 30 years of friendship. It's gone. So Mia said, I just feel like I'm a checkbook. This is what she's saying in her confessional. I'm a checkbook for Jacqueline. And even though I appreciate her mom taking me in, am I supposed to be a checkbook forever? So then Candace goes, this is a domestic issue. And the police say this is very dangerous. So we need to just leave this alone. Listen, yeah, y'all don't want to go to the jail in Mexico. So stop fighting, act like y'all got some sense and get on out the way. So then Giselle was like, let's just table it. So Karen said, yeah, you know what? I, I have to agree with Giselle, even though I normally don't. Let's just table it. So Karen said, yeah, um, hopefully this surprise will be better. So Karen and Giselle agree to table the issue. And Karen has a surprise for the group. So they go out. She has a shaman for the heifers and all their negative energy and whatnot. So they each go around to say their intentions. So Cherie said she intends to be happy because when you're happy, you don't have time for hate. And so they paying over to Karen. So Karen in her confessional, she said, yeah, I don't know why this has been leprechaun keeps showing up looking for a pot of gold, looking for a friendship, looking for. I was like, dang, Karen, she must really have some tea on Karen. Now everybody can act oblivious if you want to, but she must really have some tea for Karen to be name calling and calling her a leprechaun. And I, I was like, what? So Jacqueline is still crying. Girl, pull your shades up. It's giving weekend at Bernie's. Get yourself together. Candace is consoling her. See, Jacqueline, this is what happens when you run up behind somebody and don't get to know the other ladies on your own. OK, and now Candace and Wendy are the ones coming to your side when you were in that pool in Miami talking about I will make sure Wendy doesn't return back to this house. See, that's why you need to formulate your own opinions about people. Have your own brain. And Mia is awful. And I hope that you see that now. So they all go to their rooms. They see their gifts and Robin sees hers and it's a veil that says bride to be right. So she goes outside to get a little air and the veil flies away. So in the confessional, she was like, yeah, this is a sign. I'm never getting married. Oh, well, child, we knew that. Moving forward. So it's time for Ashley's birthday dinner, right? So Karen, Ashley, and Gizzard, they go down first. And I have to give Giselle her props. She been dressing better this season, okay? Keep it casual, keep it matchy, and you're going to be fine. She has been dressing better this season. So Ashley starts talking about how she saw Giselle on a date with this man named Steve from a few seasons ago. Y'all remember when they went to New Orleans for her dad's birthday and he was an ex-boyfriend and Giselle basically said that he's always been around and she's tried to get rid of him, but he won't go. Girl, it always be that one, don't it? It's like every season of your life, they just reappear. It's like, sir, you ain't snatched up yet. Please leave me alone. Anywho. So Ashley was like, did y'all kiss? She was like, I mean, yeah, we did kiss after. Girl, I ain't buying it. Anywho. She says she wants a man that can make her laugh and has a big D. Well, child, the way Jamal get around, it's safe to say he at least got one or the two. I'm just saying, allegedly. So then Shasha comes down. Hey, girl, sit on down right across from Karen. <laughs> this better get messy. Oh, so she sits down, right? So then Wendy comes down. Baby. Wendy knows she put that on. Do you hear me? Despite what they say about Wendy, Wendy gonna be in something cute. She gonna be in something cute. 
So then the other ladies come down and I actually did like the pink dress that Robin was wearing. I said, okay, Rob, okay, you didn't offend me this episode. Giselle got her eating pants on. <laughs> Giselle said, I'm gonna be comfortable, honey. I got my eating pants on. So Robin is telling them when she sat down that she found the veil, it was so cute, but it blew away. So in the confessional, Karen gonna say, yeah, the veil said, Bobby, you ain't getting married. It's been seven years with that ass ring. Even the veil knew to get the F out the room. I said, oh my gosh, Karen is good in confessionals. She will give you a shady moment to laugh at in a confessional. So then Candace brings up looking at your lady parts again. And she says she looks at hers to remember it, you know, to remember it like it was before it gets stretched out after she has a baby. Girl, your vagina gonna be fine. Okay, as long as your baby ain't got a big old head and stretch your eye and everything, you're going to be all right. Okay, so then she tells them that this, she thought she was pregnant for like two seconds. I would not be sharing nothing with this group. I don't know, y'all. I just would not be sharing my personal business with this group. I would have to give them the same thing Giselle does, surface. I'm talking about all y'all business and none of mine because y'all can't be trusted. So then Giselle goes, well, I have a confession, Sharice. I told Karen that you posted that video because you didn't get invited to the live show. So she's like, that's not totally true. I didn't really care about the invite. Well, Giselle made it sound like you did. And what do you mean it's not totally true? So it's part of it? Because what? Girl, anyway. So Karen was like, I didn't mind you posting the video. But what I didn't like is that you didn't send it to me. Because it could have been a fun, funny moment between the two of us since you basically been begging me to be my friend. Now, Karen, you know, dang on well, Sharice is blocked. That's number one. Number two, even if she sent it to you, you wasn't going to say nothing to her back because you can't be bothered with her. You don't like her. You would have ignored that text message. Let's just keep it real. So Sharice was like, let's be clear. OK, I'm good with not being friends. I just rather you be a woman and say you don't want to be my friend instead of going to other people. My thing is this. Are y'all really at this table at this big grown age talking about being friends like y'all are in the high school cafeteria? Who cares? Who cares about y'all being friends? So Karen said, nobody has talked about your ass in years. <laughs> oh, so then Sharice starts asking, well, why didn't you call me during my divorce or when my dad died? Karen said, no, I texted you and that's all I had to give you because my mother had passed as well. So Sharice said, and I drove to you. I was there for you. So then Giselle pipes up and she was like, well, she did go to the funeral. Karen said, I'm going to check you about that. You will not talk about my mother. I mean, it just took a left turn. I said, what is happening? Sharice said, I didn't say anything about your mama. Like, what are you talking about? So Karen is like, that's not your end to this group. At this point, I am completely lost. I was like, is she saying Sharice tried to come to the funeral to get back into the group? Because she never said anything negative about your mom, Karen. So Karen is like, I will whoop y'all in this place. So she starts standing up. Giselle talking about, I have no idea why I am watching this geriatric fight. Ma'am, Karen is seven years older than you. Why do you always do that? A few years earlier and y'all could have went to high school together. You done spent one night with Ashley's PYTs and got confused, honey. You are only the P and the T. You are not the P and the T and the Y. <laughs> Child, she confused about her age, honey. Oh, I'm so sick of it. So now they both standing up, honey. Sharice was like, I wish the f you would. It gave me Sheree. When Sheree was talking to that party planner and that vein was popping out. So Sharice is trying to talk. Karen trying to talk. They fussing. Karen is getting up. She losing it. And I'm lost. Okay. But I do feel like Karen overreacted because girl, that lady didn't say nothing about your mama. Nothing. So I was so confused as to how it went from. And I came to the funeral. You will not talk about my mother. I'm like, what is happening? I'm confused as to why Karen is so nook if you buck. Clearly, Sharice has something to say that Karen did not want her to say. And so she deflected, got loud and started standing up to start a whole new separate argument that didn't have anything to do with anything. Like that was complete confusion. And also Robin, where is, where's your scooter? Number one. Number two, where's your phone? Where's RDZ? We need it to come out now. Why aren't you saying that one of them is being antagonistic? You just sitting at the end of the table looking confused and that's because you like Sharice. 
Girl, I can't stand none of y'all, child. Comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.